Today's guest is Alan Luxburg, who is a highly successful sales executive and vice president with over a decade of experience in the technology industry. Alan is a results-driven leader with a proven track record of driving revenue growth, building high-performing teams, and developing long-lasting customer relationships. So Alan, thank you very much for being on. How are you doing today? Excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. And, uh, you know, I, I think actually you're my first guest from the Netherlands. I don't think I've ever had anybody uh, from that. So I was telling you off there, like, I appreciate that. Uh, and also, I think you're actually the best dressed uh, guest that I've had on here. So I, I appreciate it from both of those <laughs> instances. So thank you very much for, for showing up in this way. Um, and yeah, I'd love for you to just contextualize like, uh, you know, more about yourself and how you got into sales, how you got to doing what you're doing, you know, floor is yours for that. Excellent. Yeah, no, and I, I appreciate it, Vice first of so what you're doing, uh, what you're doing for a lot of people online, that you're creating the content, but you're actually also vulnerable and getting people to talk to you. It's really helpful because I think mindset is very much uh, underestimated and it's still a taboo, even though people say it's not a taboo, but in many countries it is. So um, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. And that's why I'm also willing to uh, to do this. And um, yeah, I'm very excited about it. I, I started... Uh, working in sales a long time ago, but it actually came from a passion for mine to help people as well. So ever when I was little, I was always helping people. I was playing football, like European football, soccer. <laughs> and um, and I remember that I, uh, I did a tackle and uh, a small boy fell and I was small as well. <laughs> and then um, I actually let the ball go and I turned around and asked, are you all right? And he looked at me stunned like, yeah, thanks for the ball, and he ran away. So, um, so, but I feel like at, in terms of sales and entrepreneurship, um, we're still doing that, right? We, well, at least not me. I'm not there just for the money. I'm there to help people, and I believe in products and 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 services that I deliver, so I can actually help. So, um, yeah, I built my career quite early on already. I always love to work hard and be a performer so if I had to be in at nine I usually be in at seven or maybe eight the latest and I already started calling customers and seeing how can I support them before the nine o'clock meeting starts or trying to beat the yeah the rush and um, yeah that always uh, helped me improve in my career and I'm very adaptable loyal and trustworthy so uh, yeah at the moment I'm vice president in sales so I'm very uh, happy where I am at the moment. That's awesome. And I mean, you don't often associate sales as like, I want to go in there and, and help people, but that, that's the irony, right? Like really good sales is actually about, you know, who are you? What are the, the problems you're struggling with? This is how I can help you. Like, are, are you in or out? So I think that's such a super cool thing for, for you to share because, you know, I have a lot of guests that come on here that that have their own businesses. Some are like many of them are coaches as well. And usually sales is something that a lot of them tend to to struggle with. And oftentimes one of these hurdles is like, well, I don't want to be pushy or, you know, there's other things that come along in there, but the, the shift oftentimes happens when it comes around, well, this is how you can actually help people. Like it, it is through the this process, you actually get to help them. So I love that you're, you know, leading with that. And if there's something you want to add to that, I, I'd love for you to like floor is yours to add or comment to that. Yeah, I think I think it's a very valid point because that's something I used to struggle with. It's like, hey, am I not selling like, you know, to make myself better? But the more you, you know, I can't sell everything. So I need to start with that. So if there's some stuff that I know deep inside that is not true or right to sell, I wouldn't be able to. Um, but I'm at the moment in cybersecurity and I know like people are at risk. So businesses are being lost because they get hit by ransomware, especially, you know, the smaller businesses um, are hit. And so I changed my philosophy and I started talking to customers. And for example, what was my key turning point is I spoke to a hospital and they said, well, if we don't have your products, you actually save our patients from dying. And that's when the light bulb turned on it's like actually I'm we're doing an amazing job so started telling this story and it resonated with our customers but also with the team and yeah I feel 100% comfortable of talking more about it and actually supporting our customers yeah definitely love it love it I think that's a very cool uh 
story of something you don't usually associate with. So I appreciate you sharing that. So yeah, in that case, I'd love to then see how I can support you today. So, you know, what are the top problems, top challenges that, that you are facing right now? I think the, there's still, I know there's still work to be done. Um, and it's always a work in progress. And I have limiting beliefs as well, even though I try my best to have a diary or, you know, talk to myself what I'm thankful for and stuff like that. But I keep learning every day. So, um, yeah, my, my main struggle is, is, am I good enough or is it good enough? Or, you know, is, yeah, am I performing well enough? And that's always like, I read a book from Mo Godet. I don't know if you know Mo Godet, but he called it Becky. So it's a third person. And so I have Becky always on my shoulder, challenging me constantly. And sometimes you have a weak and vulnerable moment and you start doubting yourself. So I'd love to talk a little bit more with you about that. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, you're clearly very self-aware, like this is not your first foray into doing this, right? Like you've identified a part of you that oftentimes keeps you, you know, in doubt or, or has a sort of inner critic. So tell me more like about that pattern, how it's affecting you to just so I have some more context. Yeah, so um, it's, it's always the same uh, back and forth conversation. Like I said before, is it, are you good enough? If if I'm taking a step left, is it the right step? And when it's successful, did I do enough? And when it's not successful, you know, it's saying, yeah, you see, I told you it's not good enough. So it's it's that that constant battle in your head that you can't have the rest because maybe you're slacking or you know told you you're not good enough. It's it's that that I'm usually struggling with. Who am I doing it for? Um, I'm a dad with two kids. That's what I do it for. And then it's the I think the the most. And now now I'm I'm saying more, so more comes out. But I think the most um, thing I struggle with is the constant pressure, like whether it's pressure at work or thinking about the family. You know that you have to perform. That is uh, that is massive. I think. Yeah. Okay, got it. So if we were to dive deeper into that because you mentioned multiple times okay like i'm the sense of i'm not good enough and then it manifests as various different questions that i tend to ask myself or judgments that i give myself so if we took that a step further like what like if you had to complete this statement what makes me good enough is fill in the blank i i think if you strip everything away i'll still keep fighting and build it all back up again that makes sense so i think that makes me good enough i will keep fighting and i know that i will keep going yeah so what makes me good enough is i keep going no matter what yeah yeah unstoppable okay so what makes me good enough is being unstoppable or even when i do get stopped i continue going like what well, well, resonates more with you yeah, I think the latter. So I think if even if it's all gone, doesn't matter. We'll, we'll just start again. Okay. And how does that make you good enough? Um, I think where eighty to ninety percent of people stop is that. See, I told you so. I'm not good enough. Or if they miss the winning shot at a match, uh, maybe this sport isn't for me. Or you know what I mean? It's it's that. That that I'm always trying to beat. It's always there, right? If if you hit, if you don't hit your numbers or you don't win a customer, it's always there. And I think for me, not giving up on that that makes it yeah, for me that uh, that keeps me going. Yeah. Okay. So I understand your response to obstacles or doubt or the inner critic or lack of results in particular thing or setbacks like your response is I, I i keep going okay and i keep going because what makes me good enough is that i never actually stop so why is it that that makes you good enough mm -hmm. 
that's a good question. I, I usually I stop at where you the last question. <laughs> so now I need to go one one further. And um, yeah, I think I think regardless of what comes on my path, and I have these visions like I like you. I want to build a better world. I want to help people. I want to progress people and support people. And I always think like you know, even if for example my leg goes off. I would still go and I would still try to motivate people. And maybe life is trying to teach me a lesson that I should be more thankful for my legs when I wake up. You know what I mean? So trying to, so I think it, it's that it, it's, is. I had a tough period last week with my dad privately taken to the hospital and stuff. And I still kept going because I was trying to find out what is life trying to teach me here? What am I supposed to learn from this lesson? And I think that is, for me, the key is that I'm not saying why me, I'm saying what is happening and what can I learn from this situation? Okay. And I think that's a beautiful perspective to hold of like that whole idea of like life's not happening to me, it's happening for me. And I can see how that would be a good way for you to continue to perform where you're going. What I find interesting with that answer is it, it doesn't really answer the original question. Like it's another example of the frame you have to justify mm -hmm. you continuing to never give up. Well, because life is happening for mm -hmm. me. What's the lesson here? So I keep going, right? But mm -hmm. if you really had to like dig a layer deeper, what makes you good enough when you don't give up? What does that say about you? What 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 does that mean? What what does it fulfill inside you when you don't actually give up? yeah that's 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 a tough one and that's i guess that's why i'm here right so it's um yeah i i also my wife always says as well you you don't have any rest like you don't stop and i think it's that moment that i don't i can't find rest i can't find a moment of peace because if i stop then i'm afraid what's going to happen and and i think that is the the essence of the story is the weekend, for example, just passed like that because I couldn't stop. Like, oh, I have a moment of rest instead of chilling and sitting down. I can do this. I can do this chore. I can finish some work emails. I can do that. Da, 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 da. It doesn't stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I stop, I'm afraid of what will happen. So yeah, I think so. What What's the fear? What is it that you're actually consciously or potentially even subconsciously afraid of if you stop i think that's what i said what i read on your linkedin is if you stop you're not growing and if you're not growing you're dying okay so i think it's that it is that continuous growing and finding that i i don't i shouldn't stop if you stop it's decreases your life if you continue you progress your life Okay. And just if we could, like, are you okay if we dive deeper into yeah, that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So if I'm not growing, right, then I'm dying. And well, if what makes me good enough is never giving up, then mm -hmm. it makes sense why it's so hard to take a rest. Mm. Because a rest is a threat to well, I'm good enough if I never give up. Uh, I don't want to die, so I can't take a rest. So therefore, I have to keep going and, and moving forward. So A, just before I continue, does that land for you? Does that resonate for you? What, what, what's coming up for you when I share that? I think what, what really comes up for me is that I didn't even have time to think about that because I'm afraid what I find probably. Okay. Yeah. And that fear of afraid of what I will find. And you're welcome to say no, but is that something mm -hmm. you, you want to explore here? Or it's like, okay, I know that there's something there. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to dive into that after this. Yeah, no, it, I'm curious, right? That's why I'm here as well. I'm, I'm very curious. Um, I'm, there's so much that I don't know about myself yet. And I need to find, well, I don't need to. I, I'm curious to find people who can help me discover more about who I am. Okay. And every, every I say sometimes to people, you know, you every seven years, five to seven years, all of a sudden you like 
broccoli or you like Brussels sprouts, which before you didn't. So I, I generally believe every five to seven years, we change something in our body, like our whole system resets. And that's why I'm here as well now, is so I can find out what is changing in my body and how can you help me or support me in that journey. Absolutely. And I appreciate you. Like it, it, the, the commitment to yourself is very clear, not just from you being here, but from your answers and, and how you approach a lot of the, you know, setbacks and, and the resilience that, that that's built in you. So I just want to acknowledge you for that first and foremost. And then number two, that this fear of taking a break, taking a rest, et cetera, because I need to keep going. It's like a fear, like if I stop, then like I'm, it's too scary to actually find out what's on the other side of that stopping. Is that accurate for you? Yeah, yeah. And, and when you say it back to me like that, I I start to paint pictures in my mind. So I, I get memories back why it makes sense. So the brain starts now to resonate. Oh, maybe that is what triggered it. Or maybe that's what you're afraid of. Huh? Some childhood trauma, probably. You know what I mean? So that that starts to make sense a little bit more when you dive deeper. So I love this. Perfect. So it's like, this has been a pattern that's been developing for quite a long time where I wasn't allowed to or encouraged or couldn't stop for certain reasons a long time. Yeah. Ago. Is well, that you, accurate? Yeah. And you, you probably triggered something in me what others didn't yet. So that that's exciting. Yeah. Perfect. So what's exciting about it for you? It's, you know, it's, it's also very tiring that when you sit and you want to take a moment of rest, but you can't, you know, it's like, okay, what can I do to increase my personal wealth? Or how can I, you know, uh, become a better father? How can I become a better husband? Or, you know, it's very tiring that you can't just say, okay, to take it easy, it, it will all be okay. Yeah. 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 Cause it's, the rest is needed to recharge so you can continue to go forward. But if you never recharge, it's like I'm always running on fumes. So yeah, I can understand how that would be both a quality that can serve you well as far as like getting success and, and accomplishing a lot of things. But at some point, it can also blow up and then it creates a whole host of different problems, right? So it's it's finding the balance. It's not about... I got to let go of my ambition. It's how can I be peacefully in my ambition, still achieving things, but not have it feel like a frenzy. Like that, that's kind of what I'm exactly. hearing as, as a desire. Okay, perfect. So if you look at your past, right? Cause you said this is a pattern from the past. When you did stop as a child, like what was the consequence of that? I think uh, the childhood was perfect in that sense because you didn't have anything to worry about. The The moment that was a breakthrough for me was that I saw that my dad stopped working. <laughs> there, there it came. And that we lost everything, right? The house, they wanted to come and take the furniture. And, you know, everything started to fall apart. My parents split up, lost something again. You know, car got taken, lost something again. So that's why I said when I always knew that was a trigger point for me, that 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 was painful. But I didn't know that until my dad stopped working, things got taken away. So I guess that triggered in me like, hey, maybe that's why I'm afraid of stopping, because then things will disappear. Correct. Right. So there's a wounded part of you that is so scared because of what you lived at one point, which was this association that when things stop, when things aren't in motion, when work stops, you know, whatever the associations with stop, really bad things happen. Things get taken away, security and safety get taken away. You know, the the, the idea and the, and the semblance of family that, that I experienced at that time gets taken away. So to a child experiencing something like that, that is like massive, massive fear around stopping. Now, it seems like that wounded part of you 
never really got to heal fully. And it actually got you a lot of good results as an adult. Now it's just kind of pushed so far to the extreme that like, okay, this is, this is not really sustainable or really working how I want it to work. It's not giving me the peace that I'm looking for, even though it got me some results that I've wanted. So what's landing for you there? Yeah, and I think everything. I think uh, when I spoke to other coaches, it was as well. They're like, what do you come and do here? What are you looking for? And it's, I always say rest. I'm looking for rest, you know. And that is a main part of this. And maybe now I understand that uh, nothing will be taken away. And even if, it's okay. But it's good to have that, ah, this was like a, a little light bulb moment again like okay i always knew that i got where i am now because i was pushing because i didn't want stuff to be taken away blah blah blah. but why i didn't want it was maybe because i couldn't rest right and that's uh it was a good good thing to realize yeah good and i'm glad that it's landing for you and here's the part that i would also maybe add nuance or in some ways challenge uh what you just shared Yes, you are looking for rest. The adult part of you is looking for rest. That, that's, that's what you desire, right? And mm -hmm. logically, I know you understand that nothing is going to happen like if I stop like or if I rest, like it, it'll be fine. However, the part that's actually driving all of your behavior, it's not actually looking for rest. It's actually looking to control your environment with work and to always find safety and never stopping so nothing can ever go disastrously wrong like it did in the past. So what lands for you there? I, it, it just makes sense. It, it does make sense. And it's it's sometimes the surface that you think, ah, got it, but maybe you need to take the step back. And it's like, do you really have it? Do you really understand it? So, uh, yeah, it's good that you emphasize back on that because otherwise you just brush over it and in a few months' time you get hit again, if that makes sense. Correct. Meaning, like, you can do, and, and this happens often with these types of, of patterns where on the surface, your pattern is about, like, I have a hard time relaxing and resting, right? So your adult mind starts to tackle that problem. How do I get better at productivity? How do I schedule rest into my day? How do I, you know, book vacations ahead of time? How do I set boundaries? Like all of those things are important. And they will never be like, it's the wrong tool for the job because you're optimizing trying to take rest. But this inner part of you is freaking out because it's thinking everything's going to crash if we stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so hard to then relax while even, okay, I've booked off an hour to just relax. And then all I want to do is just like get out of my own skin because it feels so uncomfortable. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think it, it, it's so funny that you say that because now I analyze before we had this session, I even emailed you like two hours before, can we do this session now? And that was because I wanted to get rest this evening but I was trying to squeeze something in which was really not, you know what I mean? So this is exactly the behavior I have. So it, it totally makes sense. And I love that you uh, that you make that more vulnerable for me to spot. So it's a uh, yeah, good thing to realize. Beautiful. Well, well again, I, I acknowledge you for having the open mind to like receive it because this is, you know, like this is a pattern that has driven a core part of your identity for a long time. So it's not about like, this is a bad part of me. It's, it actually, there's a lot to celebrate about this part of you because it, it mm -hmm. made you achieve so much, all of your performance, like like all, there's a lot of good aspects to this part. So it's not about demonizing this part or what happened to me. It's simply about recognizing where I am now in my evolution as a human is I want to balance my ambition with peace and move into the next phase in a more peaceful, fulfilled state. But I can't seem to do that because of this other part. And in the simplest terms, it's simply because the part that got you here can't get you there. And it's due to the fact that it's trying to prioritize 
this long lost sense of safety while you're trying to prioritize, you know, rest and schedule and productivity. So that's why it's this constant, I can't make this work no matter what it is that I'm <laughs> trying, right? So again, what what yeah. answer you yeah. there? And so how do you how do you recommend to deal with that? Because it's kind of like a constant bad angel, good angel <laughs> conversation happening, right? Correct. So with regards to the things that you've done in the past, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it, it seems to me the majority of what you've been trying is kind of, for lack of a better term, like head heavy. Like you're looking at limiting beliefs. You're looking at, you know, what's my awareness around this thing? Do I understand the pattern? Right. You mentioned journaling before. I'm assuming maybe some meditation, et cetera. Like they're, they're generally things like above the neck. Is that accurate as far as what you try? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So the first step to attempt this, and, and this is why we spend so much time working on this level in, in like the full up level mind program is most of the time we have a pretty good idea, at least a workable idea of what the pattern is and what the issue is. And if we could logically solve it most of the time, like I wouldn't have any guests, I wouldn't have any clients because people would just do the thing that, that makes logical sense. The issue is these are actually emotional problems that are rooted in basically the intelligence of a child, meaning like these are almost like moments frozen in time inside of your nervous system that need to be addressed on an emotional level and really worked with like you would if you were comforting a child. And I know it seems silly mm -hmm. to do that to like a high performer, but that's the that like that's the root of what's creating this pattern. So you can't treat a child like an adult. You actually have to dive in, access the emotions and heal this on a nervous system level. That gives you a clean slate where you're not freaking out anymore. And then all of the stuff you have been working on, the scheduling, the boundaries, the you know active rest or whatever, then that begins to actually have a firm base on which to build from and then that's how you begin to slowly embody a brand new normal where it's like, yeah, I'm just going to take a spa day and it's cool and I'll get back to this on Monday. So does that answer your question or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just uh, even more curious now is uh, how how does that work and how do you do that? And, you know, with I have two children, so with my child, I would give them a hug and comfort them and stuff like that. So when you said that, I pictured that. And I was like, yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very curious how uh, how your methods are and what you do. So, I mean, I can't give you a hug on, on Zoom, so <laughs> it wouldn't include uh, the, 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 that piece. Um, but listen, like, I mean, the, the short end of the, the answer is like, yeah, you know, you joined the up-level mind program and we go through the the process and, and we do it there. Yeah. The, the, the longer answer is, Everything that you missed uh, from this developmental stage, you can begin mm -hmm. to access and give to yourself. There's various different tools that for you to access um, these parts of, of, of your body, to get comfortable with those emotions, to get familiar with what you know these certain parts of you believe. Um, and generally, they're going to require a totally different skill set and tool set than what individuals like yourself who are very intelligent, high performing, and have gotten there because they've been able to use their head is just like, you've never really learned how to soothe and access these parts of you. So a lot of my work is first holding the space for you to be able to go to these places at the levels that you need to, helping you heal through them, and then eventually giving you the tool set to be able to then access that on your own. Cause you're, it's like, you, it's almost like you, you begin to learn and speak a brand new language. Like you're very good at speaking a logical, rational language. I'm not as good as tuning in and speaking an emotional, like neurological language. So does that mm -hmm. answer your question mm -hmm. in some way? Or definitely. Still kind of definitely. Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. Perfect. Just more curious. <laughs> no, that, that's totally fine. It, it comes up all the time. So um, I get it. So I guess then, like, I know we kind of dove into this quickly and we kind of got to the root quickly. So does this feel complete for you? Or is there still something left outstanding around this issue? 
No, I, you know, I, I don't think it's for any human error complete, right? I, you know, it's, it's, I always say to people that they ask me, why do you have so many coaches? Why do you always find a coach? It's like, I don't go to a dentist once a year and never brush my teeth, you know? Mm-hmm. As I keep going to the dentist, I keep brushing my teeth and that we find normal. The same, do you work out? Yes, I work out three to five times a week. And I don't stop because I need to do it. And I feel exactly the same about my mind. It's, my mind is arguably one of the most important things that I have. And I don't know all the answers. Yeah, I read books. I listen to podcasts. You know, I watch a YouTube uh, shorts uh, on motivation, on mindset. But I'm, I will never stop learning because it's one of the most fascinating things I have. And I can learn so much from other people like yourself. You know, Absolutely. And, and again, I want to acknowledge you for that because a lot of people do what you do but then they don't you know have experiences like this where they're actually pushed to certain edges or or, you know going through the discomfort of being witnessed or being in vulnerable places and you know i want to emphasize that because that's really where the actual transformation happens and i'm not saying people have to go on a podcast like you are to work with me in this way but it's just whatever your version of what you've done today That's always going to be the first step. Always, like I've said it many times on the podcast, it's hard to see the building if you're standing on the balcony, right? So to take that investment and like you need somebody that doesn't have the baggage and the drama to look at you objectively, be able to reflect back to you what, you know, is seen and then be able to guide you into diving into the places you need to, to not just solve the surface level, but to like really get to the emotional root of why these things are happening it opens up the space for you to do so much. So yeah, I, I commend you for that and I celebrate you for that. So yeah, if this does uh, feel complete for you, as, at least as far as mapping this out, um, feel free to you know, close us off by let everybody know where to find you, who's the best person to find you, like floor is yours for that. Yeah, well, I also want to give a compliment back to you because, you know, we haven't briefed anything or talked about anything, you know, and you just, you know, openly talk about it and you are also being vulnerable by, you know, I could have been extremely good in mindset and you would be like, whoa, what am I doing? And no, you, you're very knowledgeable, you know, you straight away hit my core and I said, you know, I had multiple coaches before, so I love it uh, that you did that and I think many people come also to sessions like this and they're being vulnerable. They do research. They look at the likes of Tony Robbins and stuff like that. And they think, I know everything. And why, what is he going to do? I hope he doesn't do that. No, I'm completely the opposite. I'm super curious and I love it. And that's why I felt the energy, even though it's over Zoom and we're far away, but I felt the energy and I was like, okay, I'm going to learn something here. I'm super excited. So I appreciate that you, uh, you did this for me and yeah you can find me on linkedin i think that's definitely the best uh, best way to connect with me um yeah and again i'm uh, very thankful for this awesome yeah no i'm thankful for for you coming on in the way that you did especially like i said this is late evening for you so you know I, to take the time out of your evening is uh appreciative of my end as well and yes we'll include your uh linkedin profile in the show notes so alan thank you very much for coming on and for everybody else listening we'll see you on the next one all right take care